Well, good morning, everybody. I um, wanted to share an idea that I've been working on for a while, just as we're coming up on winter break and as I'm starting to plan for future projects um, that my, my students will work on. I was trying to think of some unique ways that I could take this current situation that we're in the pandemic where it's difficult to travel, not only for my students' families, but also just us as a school. You know, it's very difficult for us to go on field trips, um, especially this spring. I mean, who knows what the spring, summer, even next year's going to look like. So as I was trying to think through what, um, what a, a relevant project I could have my student work on would be, kind of came up with this. And it's using an app called Google Earth. If you're familiar with it, um, you probably know how to get there. If you're unfamiliar with it, it, know that it now works on Chromebooks. This is something that students can pull up on their own. Um, just go have them do a Google search for Google Earth and it'll appear. It also works on iPads and any type of tablets or phones that students can have. I actually like viewing um, some project student projects on a on my phone sometimes a lot better than I do even on, on a Chromebook, because it's very easy to use. You can pinch and navigate and do all that fun stuff. So I um, wanted to share the project. So I'm calling this uh, Create a Virtual Vacation or a Field Trip. And the, the idea behind the project is that because it's so difficult for schools or families to travel due to COVID this, this holiday um, or this vacation that's coming up, this break, um, the idea is, well, if you could take your family's anywhere. If you could take our, in the spring um, a field trip anywhere, where would you go? What would you do? And why would you go there? Um, so this is what my students have been working on. It's kind of a cross-curricular project. You can tie in writing, social studies, um, even science or history. You know, It really depends on what, uh, what, what content you want to spin this towards. But let me kind of show you how this works. Um, the, the idea behind it is that here on Google Earth, you'll see there's this little, kind of looks like a little place mark with a, a square or rectangle beneath it. That's the projects button. And when you load up on Google Earth to make a new project, you just press the button that says new project. Click right here where it says create project in Google Drive. And that actually goes in your drive. There's a folder called Google Earth and it makes this in there. Yes, these are collaborative. You can have students work on these together. There's a share button right there, which is great because once the students are done, they can actually share their project with you in exactly the same way that students can share with one another, with other teachers. They can collaborate on these together. So the first thing you want to do is give your project a name. Um, we'll just, uh, you know, I grew up in Boston, so we'll just call this uh, our Boston vacation. This little description, have them put something here if they want, maybe buy their, uh, you know, uh, you could have them put their names on there. Um, you could even write up a little, have them write up a summary or two. I want to go here because, and then your project is now created. And just like a slideshow, it's now ready to add things to it. However, unlike a slideshow where it's kind of those static images or words on each slide, what's great about a Google Earth project is instead of using um, images um, to tell a story or a simple text to tell a story, you have those slides, but you also have the entire surface of the Earth. It's kind of like the canvas, right? So if I was going to be retelling, say, or if I was going to be creating a, a virtual field trip of a trip to Boston, um, very, very easy to do. So what you do, you got your project open, you press new feature, and there's several things you can add to it. Uh, for simplicity's sake, you can just press search to add place, and then you can search for something to do in this area. So um, have to go to Fenway Park. So you do a search. You press enter, and then it will do a, a search. It'll say like, hey, is this what you want to add? If it is, you just press the button that says add to project. Then if you have more than one project, you choose the one that you want it to go to. In this case, it's this, oops, sorry, do that one more time. You choose the project you want it to go to and press save. Now you can edit these place marks, excuse me, 
You can edit these place marks, add your own text. You can add videos and custom text and even custom images. If you've been to the spot, you want to add an image onto it. Um, I'll show you how to do that on the next one. All right, well, let's add another feature to our project. So you click New Feature. You press Search to add place. And then, oh, I don't know. What else is something cool to do in Boston? Maybe you want to go see the old North Church, right? One if by land, two if by sea, Paul Revere, that whole story. So you do the search, and then it'll fly you directly above that location. Well, here's the deal. I mean, it looks cool, the 3D imagery from, from up high. You can kind of see the steeple where maybe the lanterns were hung. Um, but for this one, I kind of want to, to, to adjust what this image looks like. So I'm going to press Add to Project. And now I'm going to press Edit Place. When I do that, it's now that I can start to customize this a little bit. Maybe for this one, I want to zoom in. There's it from above, but you know, from directly above, it's hard to see like the steeple. And maybe if I'm trying to tell the story or if I'm trying to have my students see where this took place, a little trick. If you hold down, if you're on a MacBook, the command key, if you're on a Chromebook or a PC, it would be the control key. If you hold down control and then you can click and drag on your mouse and you can adjust the camera how you want it to look. Once you have it at the angle that you want, this, this camera, um, the, the, you know, what it's facing, you've got a little button down here that says capture this view. And then here on the left, this is for the, the geo nerds out there, but when I press capture this view, if you notice it adjusts the range, how many meters above this, the latitude, longitude, how far above, and even the heading and the degrees that your camera is tilted at, it's all there. So what did that just do? Well, when I search for this place now, um, when I sorry, when I watch this this project, this tour on the old Google Earth, it was called. Um, when it comes to this part of my project, the camera is going to fly down to this view. All right. Well, let's add one more thing. Let's. Um, I've got Fenway Park, the old North Church. Let's add a new feature. We're going to search to add a place here. Um, try to think what else would be something cool. All right, let's talk about the Museum of Science. Yes, I know I misspelled that, but thank you, spell check. So gives me some, some suggested places. Do a search for that. Fly me there. This is one of my favorite museums of science, by the way. And so like before, I'm just going to press Add to Project. And I'm going to press that Edit Place button again, because for this one, maybe I want to start to add my own text here. If you notice from that little knowledge card, the thing that popped up in the top corner here, um, it gave me a suggested image and some suggested text. But I want to replace this text that they suggest with maybe something that I want uh, the students to see. Right? I want to change it and customize it. So I'm going to press Replace. can add my own custom image. Just going to click that and do a quick Google image search here and search for maybe science. Um, oh, I don't know. Let's do that one kind of looks fun. If you have your own image that you want to upload, like a picture that you took, you saw there's a whole bunch of options there. You can even add a YouTube video link on here and that video pops up. Either one that you upload or the students upload is on there. This little box right here is where you can add um, some custom text. Again, this we're planning our, our dream vacation here, our dream field trip. You know, you can add some custom text. This is one of the finest science, oops, science museums in the world. I can't wait to take you here. Do exclamation points. You can choose, do you want an info box? We'll go with a large one, which kind of, it's like a whole panel that fills in from the right side of your screen. You can even customize the place mark if you want. Um, if you go to like, oops, sorry, click the three dots here. You can even upload a custom icon, which is super fun. Maybe put like a beaker or a Bunsen burner on there. Press see more icons. You can see there's a whole bunch of them that you can choose from in there organized by category, places, transportation, crisis. It really depends on the type of story that you're trying to tell. 
Um, so let's see, for this one, it's Museum of Science. Let's do something like weather related. I know that the Museum of Science in Boston, they have like a cool like lightning cage, which is cool to see. Well, next thing I wanna do is I wanna adjust the camera one more time. So I'm going to, instead of swinging it around like this and pressing that capture this view button, let me move my face out of the way here. In the bottom right-hand corner, there's this little orange dude. You see him down there? That's Pegman. And when I click Pegman, um, you'll see it kind of puts these blue lines and blue dots all over everything. That's a street view image, which means that there is a 360 street view image available of that location. And you can actually include that as part of your tour, part of your project. So what I'm gonna do, I've clicked them. Now, anytime I click one of these spots, we'll do it right in front of the Museum of Science. I'll click that, it'll fly me in directly down the street view. I love how the imagery changes from, um, a, you know, from the, 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 the custom computer model to the real one. And so here's us right outside. If you're wondering why is that blurred out, probably one of two things. It's either somebody's face. Yeah, see, it's an astronaut face that's on there that it thought was a real per a person, so it blurred it out. I think that's kind of cool. So anyway, so we'll, um, ooh, it was rainy that day. Let's move down the street a little bit right outside. There you go. We'll go. We'll go right here. You press capture this view, and now as part of this project, when that image loads up, when I come to that part of the project, um, that appears. Now you can also add a title slide to this. Some of y'all might have saw that full screen slide. You know, we can call this, you know, like Boston vacation. Add some custom text. I can't wait to take you here. Oops, how would I spell that right? And just like before, I can add a custom image. We'll just search Boston, Massachusetts, and then we'll add one of these images. Sometimes it takes a minute to upload. We're putting this together. You can organize um, the, the, this list any way that you want. I want my title slide to appear first. So I'm just gonna click that and drag them up and drop them there. And now that my project's finished, I'm gonna press present and watch how it walks you through this tour. This title slide is going to appear first. So I'm going to press that button. Let me go full screen here. Um, my little title, or sorry, my, my project appears. And then here in the boop, here in the bottom left-hand corner, these is, this is kind of like your next slide button. Um, so when I press that, it's going to fly me through my tour um, and walk me through those different locations. And watch as I come to these different locations. Remember, we adjusted the camera where it's not always directly above. It's going to walk me through or show me what these locations look like. All right, so there's obviously many applications to using Google Earth, way more than just creating vacations. This is obviously a pretty powerful storytelling tool. One thing I've had a lot of my student, let me move myself back over here. One thing that I do with my students every year is we go and we take our personal narratives that we write and we turn them into Google Earth stories. After they're finished writing their paragraphs and planning it out, we go and we take the writing, we go on Google Earth and we find where those different locations took place, where those different events took place, and we, um, well, retell our stories on Google Earth. And I've always found it's a pretty powerful way to bring student writing to life. Yes, the student went to a place called Hillbilly Hot Dog, which was super fun. But um, that's one thing you can do with it, have students retell stories. They can even retell famous events from history, maybe if you're studying the American Revolution, if you're studying you know, some type of European history, go and locate those locations and put them on there. And then last thing this is just a fun little project that I have my students um, do each year. Um, we always each year do what I call a, a scale model of the solar system project, where we imagine, hey, if the sun was the size of a um, of a beach ball, how far apart would every other planet in the solar system be? And I have my students go out and record these. But again, you're really just scratching the surface here as far as Google Earth goes. Um, it's a really fun and powerful tool, and it's a great way to connect, especially in this era of COVID where it's so difficult to get anywhere, to connect students 
to these real life places that you're studying in class. All right. Thanks. Bye.